Hi learners, today we are here again to talk about Euclidean geometry, introduction to Euclidean geometry. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to identify properties of geometric shapes, types of angles, and use them in problem solving. Angles and lines. But before we go on, I just want to remind you that one of the reasons why we are doing this lesson is for you to be able to identify and write the reasons associated with statements during the time you are answering questions. Angles around a point. Here is a point surrounded by angles. When we sum up these angles, it should be equal to 360 degrees, for example, 86 degrees plus 73 degrees plus 61 degrees plus 56 degrees plus 84 degrees should be equal to 360 degrees. Supplementary angles add up to 180 degrees and one of the examples is angle on a straight line. Take for example TMP angle M1 plus M2 plus angle M3 is equal to 180 degrees. Vertically opposite angles. Here it is. We have a line and another line. These two lines cross, they cut across each other. And as you see, we have an X shape. And so when we have an X shape, remember, it is about vertically opposite angles. Now, in this X shape, for example, the line KN and then NG. So obviously we have the V shape K N G. So that V shape gives you angle N2. Let us look at the line F N L. That is another V shape. So these V shapes, in these V shapes we have angle N2 and N4. N2 is therefore equal to N4 vertically opposite angles. Alternate angles. Alternate angles are formed when we have two parallel lines and another line cutting across the two, which we call the transversal or the transversal line. So in this case, we look at the Z shape or what we call the Z shape of a line. As you know, the letter Z. Angle H1 is equal to angle K1. As you can see, that is what we call alternate angle. Corresponding angles are also formed where we have two parallel lines and a transversal. In a corresponding angle, we have an F shape. We can have the line L, V, T, P. Now, you see that the line LV and OT are parallel to each other. So the angle S1, the angle S1 is equal to the angle T1. And then we look at the angle V2 is also equal to the angle T2. Co-interior. Co-interior simply means you are sharing something internally, like you know, co-partner or co-sharing. So in this case, co-interior angles must also be formed by parallel lines and a transversal. So in this case, we have angle H1. Angle H1 plus angle K1 must give us 180 degrees. Triangles. You know, tri means three, and then angles added. So triangles, we have a geometric shape that has three sides, but this particular triangle we are looking at here is equilateral triangle. 
what does it mean? Equi means equal. Lateral means line. So all the three sides of equilateral triangle are equal. And the interior angles are also equal. Scalene. The word scalene tells you that this triangle is special. All the sides of the triangle are different. Each and every side is different from the other in length. And the interior angles are also not equal. Isosceles triangle. Isosceles triangle has a very important property. Two sides of the triangle are opposite each other and are equal. Now, inside the triangle, one interior angle is opposite one side of the triangle. And if you look at the second angle, interior angle, it's also opposite the other side of the triangle. Whilst the two sides are opposite and are equal. Therefore, we consider it to be angles opposite equal sides of an isosceles triangle are equal. Right angle triangle. I believe even from primary school, we would have remembered that any triangle that has 90 degrees in it is a right angle triangle. And when we talk about right angle triangle, obviously you will remember what we call the Pythagoras theorem, which is the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of squares on the other two sides. AB squared plus BC squared is equal to AC squared. Sum of the exterior angles. Actually, the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the interior opposite angle. For example, angle A plus angle B should be equal to angle C. Sum of the interior angles. If we add up angle A to angle B, to angle C, the result should be 180 degrees. But look at it. We've done something earlier about a straight line. Look at angles C plus angle A plus angle B. That also gives you 180 degrees. Here we come. Similarity and congruency. In congruent triangles, we look at triangles based on their properties before we describe how they are congruent. One of the examples is right angle hypotenuse side. That is the reason associated with this type of congruency. As you can see, this is a right angle triangle. That is why we have right angle first, because the obvious thing we can see here is 90 degrees in both triangles. Then we have two other sides that correspond and are equal. So therefore, the association to this is right angle hypotenuse side. Another property of congruent triangle is when we have two angles that are interior and correspond to another two angles in another triangle and one side of a triangle also corresponds and equal to another side of a triangle. In this case, since we have two angles that correspond and are equal, we can say angle, angle, and side. Another congruent type of triangles is when we have angle, angle, then we have another side equal to another side, then the last side equal to another side. So in this case, we have one angle in the middle of two sides. So we have side, angle, side. In this one, we have two angles 
then we have one side. So what do we do? We consider the angles one angle, one side, one angle. Here we are. We will be talking about congruent triangles and then we move to our next part. This is the last part of congruency when we have all the sides of one triangle correspond and are equal to the three sides of the second triangle. So obviously there is no angle that has been mentioned here to be equal. The reason is side, side, side. Similar triangles. There is only one major property that shows that two angles are similar. That is, if each and every angle in one triangle correspond and are equal to those in another triangle. As you can see here, angle A is equal to angle D. Angle B is equal to angle E. And angle C is equal to angle F. And even if you look at the sides, for example, let's look at the line EF. The line EF is 12 units, but the line BC is 6 units, so they are not equal. So obviously, the sides are proportional, but the angles are equal. Properties of quadrilateral. What is a quadrilateral? What is the meaning of the word quadrilateral? Quad is four, and lateral is line. The first property that we can talk about, or the first shape under four-sided figures, parallelogram, according to our lesson. In this case, we look at parallelogram. The opposite angles are equal. Opposite sides are equal and parallel. Diagonals bisect each other. As you can see, what is the diagonal line? BD is a diagonal line and AC is a diagonal line. The sum of any two adjacent angles is equal to 180 degrees. Now look at rectangle. Be careful when you are comparing parallelogram to rectangle. Now. In a rectangle, all the angles of a rectangle are 90 degrees. All the four angles you see there, each of them 90 degrees. Opposite sides of a rectangle are equal and parallel. So as we look at a parallelogram and a rectangle, opposite sides are equal and parallel. Diagonal lines of a, of a rectangle bisect each other. Rhombus. Rhombus is a special shape also. Opposite angles are equal. For example, B angle B is, angle B is equal to angle D. And then angle A is equal to angle C. Opposite angles are equal. All sides are equal and opposite sides are parallel to each other. Diagonals bisect each other perpendicularly. What is that perpendicular? 90 degrees. As you can see at E, that is 90. The diagonals meet and form 90 degrees there. Sum of any two adjacent angles is 180 degrees. Square. Don't you think that a square looks similar to the rhombus? But they are slightly different. All the angles of a square are 90 degrees. Angle C is 90, A is 90, D is 90, B is 90. All sides of a square are equal and parallel to each other. 
diagonals bisect each other perpendicularly, meaning where the diagonals meet, there is 90 degrees. Kite. In this diagram, we can see that two distinct pairs of adjacent sides are congruent. If you look at line AB and then BC, they are adjacent and they are equal. They are one, this is one pair. Line CD and line AD are adjacent to each other and are equal. Diagonals of a kite intersect at right angle. Intersect. What does it mean? They cut across each other. They meet there. One of the diagonals is the perpendicular bisector of another. What is perpendicular bisector? One line cuts the other and forms 90 degrees perpendicular. Angles between an equal sides are equal. Trapezium. Trapezium also has four sides. Very importantly, trapezium is a quadrilateral with the following property. One pair of opposite sides are parallel to each other. The line AD is parallel to the line BC. Learners, we've come to the end of this section. It's been very fascinating, very intriguing, and we believe that with this introduction, you are able to refer to some past exam questions and answer questions relating to this lesson. If you need help with online or offline tuition, do not hesitate to contact Edgewood Academy via plus 